Hello everyone, my name is Billy and in this tutorial I'm going to be creating an Angular application and then I'm going to be using Azure DevOps to deploy to Azure App Service. So before we begin, if you guys are curious how I set up the App Service or how I set up the project, I have that in a previous video. So in this video we're just going to be basically covering how to create the Angular app and deploying it to Azure App Service. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing you want to do is install the Angular CLI. If you install that already, then you won't need to worry about that. Also, you'll need to have a node as a package dependency. And what we're going to do is we're going to create our new project. So we're going to take ng new first project. So I'm going to take that and paste that. And I'm just going to name mine similar to all my other projects. So I'm going to make an Angular dash app. And this will give us a few options. We'll just choose whatever the default is. Um, this is assuming you will have your existing project, so you'll have your app configured. Um, what this will do is install everything, install all the new um, node dependencies. So just pause the video here and continue right after when it's done. So that's finished installing. Let's check out what we have here. Okay, so in our package json we have um, all of our dependencies and what we're looking at here is we're looking at the build so let's navigate into our new project here okay and what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and we're going to paste one here and then we're going to call this one um, dash prod and what we're going to do is add dash dash prod here and this is the um, command we're going to be running when we actually run it in our azure devops so let's uh, clear this away and let's run uh, npm run build dash prod. And once again, this is going to then build a distribution file and I will continue the video right after it's done and explain what's in it. Okay, so once that's done, you'll get a little output of all the files that are created. If your app is bigger, you'll get way more output. So this will put it into a distribution and an angular dash app folder. And what we we'll here is our polyfills, our mains, and our index HTML. So this is a key um, in Azure App Service. It will kind of look for an index HTML and automatically know to load this up, and then it'll know to load your Angular app. Okay. And uh, if you're wondering what the build does versus the build prod, your map files will not be there, and just like small little tweaks if you have any like prod settings on your um, Webpack configurations. Okay, so now let's uh, commit this to our repo, which is on um, Azure private repo. And I'm just going to say added Angular app. We're just going to commit that. And then I'm just going to say git push just to push it up. Now let's open our DevOps project. Um, we'll go back to the browser and we'll hit this little rocket ship here. This will take us to our build. You can see I already have a view app CI. So we're going to click on new and we're going to click on new build pipeline. And what we're going to do is we're going to click the classic editor here. So we have a graphical way to interact with it. And then we're going to click continue. And here you can kind of choose a template that you want to do. The most closest one we're going to choose is node with grunt. I'm going to click OK to that. OK, so here you'll have a bunch of options. You'll have your job agent that you're going to run, some variables you can input, um, triggers we will, which we will go into to kind of start off the continuous integration. You have some options here that you can play with, and retention, and you have your history of everything. And so let's go task first. We're going to first give this a better name, so Angular App-CI. The agent pool we are going to use is the hosted Ubuntu. This will have node on it. And then uh, we can go ahead and configure our, J our agent to run. So this agent, basically, all we have to do here is tell it which working directory our package JSON is in. And we will tell it that it is the Angular app. So it, in this step, it will kind of do a npm install on Angular app. Similarly to when we first um, created our app with ng-new, it did the npm install. So that is step one. And you'll notice for step two, we're going to remove this. And I'm going to clone this because we're going to kind of mimic what we did locally. And instead of command install, I'm going to run command custom. And the directory, we're going to keep the same. And this is the command we're going to put in um, when we had in Visual Studio Code. So it will be 
this command um, build prod. So that will create our distribution folder, right? And which is basically what we're trying to mimic here. So do that, but we're going to include the word run. So it will automatically put npm and then run and then build prod. So just remember, you don't need to put npm because it will automatically put that there for you. And we're just going to take this and we're just going to rename this step just to keep it a little organized. Okay, so once it goes to this step, um, you'll basically be have your distribution. And what we're going to need to do next is we're going to need to zip these folders up. So let's go here. And it's going to say archive um, files. So it's going to try to ask for where you want to archive your files. And if you did uh, output with directory, so if you do like a ASP.NET app, you'll see that you can output to a specific variable directory. In this case, we're just going to know where it's going to be, which is going to be in here. We're just going to say yes to this. And then we're, we know that it's going to be in a dis and angular dash app, right? Because that's what we had here. So it's going to produce the same folder and then we're going to look inside and we're going to zip everything in here. Okay. And then it's going to put it into this um, directory. So this is the build archive, uh, archive stage in directory. And then it's going to give you a build number. So every time you queue one, it's going to increment one, two, three, and that's where your build ID is. Okay. So let's go here. And the location that they will be published to will be the path to publish, which you'll see that this variable actually matches um, this variable here. So you won't actually have to do anything here. Um, so we can leave this as is and it will publish here. And this will be important because your release will need to know to pick up from this location. Okay. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our continuous integration. So you go to trigger and then you enable continuous integration and you can specify um, changes, change detection. So in this case here, here right here, which uh, it'll detect changes in our master branch. And I'm going to add a specific path filter since I have a view app running in this. And we're going to say our angular dash app because we know to include anything to and uh, any changes underneath this path as our angular app. So we'll save this and I'm going to actually make a modification later and we can see that it'll actually trigger. But for now, this is what we have. And we're going to just do off a build and we're going to just watch what happens. We're going to go here. You can either click here or you can go back to build, click here, and then you'll see that this clock means that it's going to be queued. And then as soon as um, it gets picked up by the job agent, it will change into the little cog. OK, so I'm just going to refresh. And we're just going to uh, continue the video once it actually starts running. OK, so you can see that it's now turned to this kind of cog, and that means that it is in progress. So I'm going to click here. To watch the build happen and see that it already did the checkout phase where it pulled the latest changes and now it's doing the npm install and it will do the npm run build prod and then it will archive the files which will be zipping and then drop the files ready for the release to start working on it so i'm just going to pause here and continue again once it's done okay perfect now you can see that it has completed and if you want to see the details you can click into it to make sure that it actually did what you wanted to do so i'm going to now create our release based on this um, i'm going to go here and i'm going to do the same thing where i'm going to click new uh, new release pipeline and i'm going to use a template again and azure app service deployment is the one i'm going to choose this time okay so one of the key things you'll want to know is that there's going to be an exclamation mark here because you're going to be wondering what do you do after this, right? Like there's no real instructions to do. So I'm just going to close this and you're going to click in here because this will be an actionable item and it's going to be stage one. I'm going to just um, be going straight to production since I don't really have anything, but you should have a staging to production and you can do all kinds of fancy stuff here. And um, you'll want to set up your Azure subscription if you haven't already. So what you'll want to do is you'll click here. And then these are my available subscriptions. I'm going to click this. And then once you do that, it's going to give you options here of which app service. And this app service name will match my app service right here. OK, so you haven't done that. Just click, click the other ones and then you'll have a little authorize button next to it and you'll just have to authorize it. OK, 
So now we'll click here and everything should already be filled in for us. It'll detect that it was a web app on Windows and this is the app service name. And we will be looking into this directory. Remember this variable name and it will be looking into any subdirectory with a zip file. So that archive and publish, that's what that did here. So it's gave it ready to go. I'm just going to kind of look through this to see if there's anything else additional we have to do. Um, doesn't look like we have to do anything else. Um, no configurations we have to update None of this. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going back to the pipeline view, which will be this, right? I'm just going to give this a name. So I'm going to call this angular app continuous deployment. And the continuous deployment part means that we will need to add our artifact over here. And this will be pointing towards our build. So you see that I have my view one and now I'm going to point it to my angular one. So I click angular. And it's going to choose my latest angular build and i'm going to add that okay and that means that when it when this artifact um, is built this default directory will be pointed to the same one that we set the build to go for okay and now this little lightning bolt here will let us set it up so that anytime the build actually completes you can actually automatically run this without having to trigger it yourself and you can obviously add filters for different things so you can add your branch filters. I only have master because this is just a demo. So I'm going to do that and I'm just going to remove that filter. Okay, so now that that's on and then the next thing you want to do is click here. And here you can kind of set um, certain restrictions. Um, usually I would set if it's going to production, I would set a approver and then I would kind of enter my email here and this will send you an email to Make sure that you actually approve the build before it goes out to production. Going to staging, going to development environment is not as key, but production is kind of important that you want to do that. Unless you do trust your developers a lot to actually not make any mistakes. But personally, I think you should always do this. Okay, so now let's trigger a build and that build should trigger this release. Okay, so I'm going to click Q and it's going to be off my master branch and this is the agent that's going to run like this and it's going to go through the same process where it's going to queue and then it's going to turn to a cog and then the release will get triggered so i'm going to continue as soon as um the build gets done and the release gets triggered okay so my build was completed i jumped to the release tab and we're going to go here and you can see that the release was created and the release uh does not have WebSockets right now so that means that it won't auto refresh for you and you'll have to click refresh a bunch of times but you can see that it created it for me so same thing with the build you can click into this right here and you can watch it go so step through this and then you can watch it even more by stepping into this and if you have multiple stages along your pipeline then it will obviously show you the different steps now you can see it downloaded the artifact which will be from our drop right and then you can see that it did the deploy step, which will be pushed to this URL right here, which I will show you by going to it. And then it just finalized the job. So let's go back to our release and you can see that it succeeded. Okay, so this is the URL I had earlier, um, which is for this app service once again. And I'm just going to paste it here again. And we're going to go to it and it should now change to our Angular app. So now let's go back and actually make a change and we'll probably change this title just because it's really quick to do that and we'll watch the build and release trigger off on its own. Okay, so we'll go here and I'm going to just minimize this. We'll go to source, um, app component, um, welcome to. We'll remove the title and I'm just going to call just here learning and we'll just save the changes updated title updated welcome title okay we'll do that yes to that and get push and this should automatically trigger the build to start going so we'll go swing to our build um we'll make sure we're in our build tab and you can see well, the web sockets automatically queued it and it will go through the build process and i'm just going to pause here again and it will continue after it's done. Everything is completed. We have our commit, which was updated welcome title. 
we have the release which is release 2 and we have our changes welcome to gesture learning 2 refresh that and we can see welcome to gesture learning 2 as now on the site and that is the end of this tutorial if you guys learned something from this video make sure you give it a quick like and if you want to catch any of my future tutorials just subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys next time